something a little different today from narrowboat precious jet so obviously everyone who watches youtube have their own things they subscribe to and i thought i'd just do five of not necessarily my favorite or my top five just um five vloggers um that i really enjoy so um have a look see what you think um and what i'll do is um all the vlogs i'll do today I'll leave a link to their home pages on YouTube so that if you guys think you might like to have a look, get yourself down there and have a look. So anyway, let's get into it. Okay, first off we have Jeffrey Croker. And there it is, the rear tub sitting perfectly on the chassis. Well, this whole alignment is less perfect. And this side is more or less perfect. And this isn't really perfect either. And there is a slight jiggle. Okay, so it rocks like a late 90s bogan. Let's recap. The rear cross member had been replaced sometime in the past. It was functional but a little bit bent inwards at the bottom, so I cut it off and reattached it so that the back face is vertical, like it should be. I used measurements and shims to level it relative to the chassis, so there is potential for an up and down discrepancy, but otherwise the cross member is back exactly where it was. And the mounting tabs for the front of the tub were a little rusty, so I repaired them, but likewise I was careful to make sure that their position remained unchanged. So here we are. The tub looks to be sitting on the chassis about right, but the holes don't line up. Well, it's no surprise that the rear mounting tabs are a little out. That just means I got my height measurement wrong by a few millimetres. Second up, we have Jeff Horchoff Bees. Hello, <laughs> Mr. Red here. Today is October the 24th, 2020. I'm in Slidell, Louisiana. Last week, Charlie and I were on the ground low, and today we're up high. <laughs> Not only do I got Charlie, though, I got Wreck-It Ralph. Come here, Wreck-It Ralph. So Wreck-It Ralph is out of his sling. Come on, Ralph, get over here. So Wreck-It Ralph is out of his sling, and he's going to be in his element. He's going to be starting taking off all, all, the, uh, all of the uh, siding. The bees are right here. We're going we're gonna to remove some of the skin on this trailer and start uh, pulling these bees out. Uh, we shot the flare already. And it seems that they're just in this area right here, but we'll find out in a, in a little while, I guess. Uh, by the grace of God, these bees right here, they're going to head up to the Abbey with me today and wreck it, Ralph, in good time, Charlie. We're going to have a good time doing this. Let's wrangle, guys. Now, when Ralph and I shot the flare, this is exactly where we, we saw them, was right here. We also got signals at this point right here, but it was just a false one. So, Third up, we have Matthew Cremona. My name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. This time, we've got a special guest here. This is Paul. He brought this uh, pecan crotch all the way from New Mexico. It's got an interesting story behind it, so we're going to get a sign up today. So Paul is going to tell us a little bit about the log, its history and story, and then we're going to get it onto the mill, and we're going to try and cut a cookie off the end. So this, this pecan tree is about 100 years old. Uh, it's, uh, out in front of my parents' yard, they have a five-acre or pecan orchard in southern New Mexico. The tree, as you can kind of see in some of the places, was starting to die off and was no longer producing any nuts. So we decided to take it down, and since I'm a woodworker, uh, we wanted to make something really nice out of it. So. Uh, we started off with this limb, that was a couple of years ago, and then we took down these two limbs and took down the rest of the tree. Uh, interesting story about this uh, limb, when I cut it, cut it down, uh, there was all kinds of wonderful critters in there, uh, wasps and cockroaches and beetles. There was also a little bat. 
And so that was kind of interesting. The space is roughly 43 inches in diameter. Uh, it is about a 100 year old tree. Uh, it's been sitting outside for about a year and a half now, ever since we cut it down. So this side is facing south, so it's nice and checked. So even though I did put anchor seal on it. <laughs> Uh, the top is about 46 inches or so, and uh, the height is about eh, roughly 36 inches, so it, it's a good size log. Fourth up, we have Travels with Geordie. Hello there and welcome to Travels with Geordie. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles, and I live on that wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the memory of my pup Geordie all the while. Well, all the while coping with a bit of an engine problem. For those of you who are regular viewers, let's cut straight to the chase, and I'm going to go with option four, a new engine. But for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, let's jump back in time and figure out how it is we got to here. I bought the boat in 2015 with a Perkins six-cylinder, uh, six 354 in it that didn't run. Well, I knew it didn't run, and I knew it had had a hard time. In fact, the boat had spent much of the previous five years with a serious amount of water in the bilge. As a result, the engine sitting very, very low in the bilge meant the engine spent much of the previous five years partially underwater. I pulled the engine, replaced the oil pan, well, had a custom oil pan made at great expense, uh, got it all back together, got the engine running, and, well, it wasn't long before the engine basically packed it in because, of course, you can't abuse an engine like that forever. Okay, so spent quite a bit of time trying to find a new engine and eventually did a Perkins 4 236 and uh, got that in and uh, it fit. Finally, we have the Samson Boat Company. My name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 110 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. So it's Sunday morning here, uh, just released episode 85 yesterday and obviously now we're going to be doing more planking, getting into the swing of it a bit more hopefully. So while I was editing the last video, Pete managed to get one of the garboards cut out. Now those are the planks that are right at the bottom of the boat, they go right up against the rabbit in the keel timber and they are mostly fastened by being screwed into the keel. Pete's already cut out the garboard on the starboard side, uh, the starboard garboard, you might say. So he's going to be getting that fastened into place tomorrow. Okay, well the garboard is pretty much ready to go on, but before it does, we've got one important thing to do, and that is to put the stopwaters in. Now stopwaters are wooden dowels which go through the joints in the centerline timbers um, and their purpose is to stop water, <laughs> of course, from getting from the outside of the boat to the inside of the boat. So over most of the boat's surface that job is done by the hull planking um, and that is waterproof and made watertight by caulking. But we can't cork these centerline joints between these timbers and these are bedded in tar and tar paper and so they should be watertight but over many years as the timbers expand and contract and so on it's possible that these joints will open up a little bit and allow small amounts of water to get in and if that happens water could go into this joint outside the rabbit travel along it travel behind the planks and track all the way along that joint until it's inside the rabbit and right inside the boat and then come out and into the build Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this little insight into the videos I watch. Please tune in next Wednesday for the next Narrowboat Precious Jet video. Please feel free to like, comment, share and subscribe.